Wind power may be a great alternative energy source, but it threatens many bird species. It's believed birds cannot see the rotating blades and don't know that they should be avoided. Norway tried painting one blade black to interrupt the pattern in order to make it visible. That was a success with a 70% reduction in avian fatalities in the Scandinavian country. Now, here at home, the Wind Energy Association and BirdLife South Africa wants wind farms to also try this method by painting their turbine blades. Let's find out more from Sam Rostin Payton from BirdLife uh, South Africa. Uh, Sam, good afternoon. Welcome to today. Uh, has this trial started? There's one wind farm in South Africa that has um, started the trials, um, a Moya wind farm in, in Hopefield. Um, it's still okay. way too early to tell whether it's effective or not, but let's see what happens. One of the, the big challenges with determining whether it's effective or not is that fatality rates at wind farms, although they um, can be quite significant for conservation, they're actually relatively rare events. Um, and this means that we need a really big sample size to be able to tell whether the measures are effective or not. Okay, before these measures are implemented, this trial is starting now, uh, what is the scale of the mm -hmm. problem? I mean, do you as, a, as SA BirdLife have an idea how many of our bird species have been killed by these turbine blades of our wind farms, which we need for energy? Exactly. That's a really good question. And I, I, I must um, congratulate South African um, Wind Energy Association, who from the very early days supported our calls for wind farms to monitor and report their impacts on, on birds. So most wind farms that are operational in South Africa do monitor the impacts and they do share those results with us. So we've got a fairly good idea of how many birds are killed at wind turbines and, and which species. Um, and if you look at the figures, we're looking at around four and a half birds killed per turbine per year, which doesn't sound like a huge number, um, but we need to bear in mind that we've got over 1,400 turbines operational currently in South Africa, and we need to scale that up um, probably by tenfold in the next 10 years. And the big challenge is that um, the, the species that are affected are already often already threatened by, by other causes and they're often already quite naturally okay. rare. Okay. So your eagles and vultures. Yeah, I thought it would be the bigger, the bigger birds. Exactly. exactly. So, so things like eagles and vultures have a very big wing, wingspan. Um, so they partly don't see it, but also it takes them a while to, to respond to the obstacles. Okay. I, I, in my intro, I mentioned Norway. They painted one blade black to break mm -hmm. the pattern. Are we doing the same? Is that what you are experimenting with together with the Wind Energy Association? That would be the ideal um, because it's nice to replicate experiments. And, and the nice thing with black turbines, uh, one blade black, is that it's a strong contrast, which is what we really want um, because birds can't see good contrast. Um, but unfortunately, there's some challenges with the Civil Aviation Authority, and the Civil Avi Aviation Authority prefers the blades to be painted red. So but currently, we, we're looking at, at red as the, the easier option, and that's what Omoya's done. Um, but ideally, black is the, the, the preferred option. Yeah, maybe a darker version of the red. So you've got one farm that's done it. What's the response been? Mm -hmm. You said you are grateful to the Wind Energy Association for embracing these measures, but the farms themselves, if you only have one out of mm -hmm. the number you've counted already, I mean, we need to be scaling up the painting. Exactly. Um, and, and so at Omoya Wind Farm, it's still way too early to tell whether it is effective or not. Um, but what we're really promoting is that if you implement this measure during construction, it's a, a really low cost measure um, 
compared to to the cost of doing that once it's operational or the cost of other operational phase mitigation measures. Um, so we're really encouraging wind farms to embrace this option. Um, but there are a whole bunch of technical um, and environmental constraints that, that need to be um, taken into account. And this is why we teamed up with the Wind Energy Association to develop this briefing document to really outline what thing, the, the various different things that need to be taken into account before a, a wind farm mm. implements this. I, um, so to, sort of when we raised this earlier, there were concerns about how it might affect the, the wind turbines operation. Um, there were concerns about visual impacts. And uh, they're all probably quite valid concerns, but our um, argument is, well, let's, rather than say this isn't an option, let's try and address those, those measures together. Yeah, I can understand the reluctance on the established wind farms because now they've been set up, they are erected, they are standing, they are running and producing whatever amount of megawatts of power that is needed. But if you're starting from scratch, it is easy to paint a blade before you set it up. The Okay, so, so uh, are you going to be monitoring uh, over this coming few months or to see what's happening on this other wind farm and also driving the campaign for the others to, to do their best to, to, to paint, even the established wind farms, to paint the blades, at least one of them red? So um, BirdLife South Africa, we don't do the, the monitoring ourselves. That's done by independent consultants and um, commissioned by the wind farms themselves. Um, so what we do is um, set the standard on, on how things should should be done and have a big overview of what's what's happening. Um, we're aware of at least one, actually, sorry, two, two other wind farms that are, are pretty close to implementing this measure. Um, and quite excitingly, what they're doing is that they're going to be fitting tracking devices on some of the eagles in the area to see how they respond in, in um, terms of how they're moving in the area, which is, is really exciting. Um, and that's going to provide us some with some data really quickly. Uh, very interesting. You try and address a big problem around energy and then nature uh, rears up and said to say, hey, don't forget us. We also need to be occupying, exactly. occupying the space. Thank you very much for your time this afternoon. I'm sure we'll talk in the near future, Sam, as this process uh, unfolds. That's Sam Ralston Payton from Bed Life uh, SA, I just by the efforts together with the South African Wind Energy Association to protect our birds, because many birds are being killed by the turbine blades of uh, wind energy farms.